Welcome to the Gerald Brooks Leadership Podcast, a deep dive into biblical leadership with pastor and author, Dr. Gerald Brooks. Hi, this is Gerald Brooks. Thank you so much for joining me for today's podcast. As I usually do, I want to put some dates on your radar screen to uh, just help you get into a leadership room. I'm doing roundtables across the nation, and they have just been so dynamic. Uh, The rooms have been alive. The leaders in there have just been uh, at a high level. And we'd love to have you be one of those high-level leaders. Uh, Literally tomorrow, I will be in the Orlando, Florida area, and I will be doing a roundtable, and I would love for you to come. That is on March the 1st. And then on March 8th, I will be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Great church, great friend. Uh, It will be dynamic. March 15th in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, All of you around the Missouri, northern Arkansas, Kansas areas, come and join us. And then on March 24th, I will be in Nashville, Tennessee. We would love to have you join us at these roundtables. Here's the way it works. Just go to my webpage, GeraldBrooksMinistries.com. You can sign up uh, there. Also, all my uh, other resources are there. We have our our leadership curriculum, which I encourage you. uh, Get that. Teach that. It gives you a way to elevate leaders among your team. And so I want to encourage you to just be a part of that. Hey, today I want to talk to you about redefining leadership, redefining leadership. So much of what is taught on leadership is drawn from the corporate world. It is drawn from the secular society around us. Now, let me just interject. I have said for years, you can learn skills of leadership from the world, but you can only learn the heart of leadership from Christ. And that is important. Because too often we see highly skilled leaders who do not have the right heart. And so you may be in a position that you're learning skills from prolific leaders that would be secular in nature. But as much as you learn those skills, you also have to embrace the heart of leadership that comes from Christ. And let me just start by highlighting just a few differences. See, we know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the Gospels. The Gospels give us the journey of Jesus from beginning to end, the commencement of the New Testament church, and they really give us a framework of the base values of what Christianity is to be, but more than that, what our hearts are to be and how we are to lead with that Christ-driven heart. So what you find in the Gospels is the Gospels focus on attitudes while corporations focus on actions. I want you to get it. Gospels focus on attitudes while corporations focus on actions. There's no place that you see this more visually than in the Beatitudes when Jesus was teaching his disciples. And as you begin to look at the Beatitudes, what you see is a progression. It starts with the inside and it goes to the outside. It starts with the inside and it goes to the outside. Now, that is important because what happens is that if you just start on the outside and you haven't paid attention to the inside, you may lead effectively for a period of time but you will not lead effectively over a long time. So the Gospels focus on attitudes while corporations focus on action. The Gospels focus on what you become while corporations focus on what you achieve. The Gospels focus on what you become and corporations focus on what you achieve. So when Jesus was forming leaders, he looked at Peter and he said, I will make you a fisher of men. What was he dealing with? Not an achievement, but what he was going to become. And you see this throughout the gospel. You see that God wants us to become something so we can do something. The world will just have you do something regardless. If you can achieve this, then the world will applaud you. 
but the gospel's focus on what you become while the corporate will focus on what you achieve. And then the gospel's focus on what you give while corporations focus on what you receive. So you see this distinction. Attitudes, the gospel, corporation, actions. Uh, what you become, the gospels, what you achieve, corporations. The gospels focus on what you give, corporations focus on what you receive. If we are going to lead effectively, then we are going to have to redefine leadership. And no one did that better than Jesus. Jesus was always redefining the common order of the day. What existed, how it existed, to what needed to be existing. So you see these phrases, and the phrases go like this. You've heard that it was said. What is he doing? He's saying, this is the way it's been, but I'm going to redefine it. And he was always redefining. Now, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 through 34, Jesus redefines leadership. And he redefines leadership in five ways. He gives us five ways that we are to lead. He gives us five ways that leadership happens in us. Now, these are common verses. Most of you are so familiar with them, but I want to take a glimpse at them from a leadership perspective because Jesus defines leadership. The first thing he does in verse 24 is he says, choose what you will live for. Choose what you will live for. What does he do? He starts off and he says, no man can serve two masters for either he will love the one and he will hate the other. What is he saying? You've got to make some choices in life. You have to choose what you will live for. What is the destination of what your life will pursue? What are you going to live for? And what that means is, you have to clarify your priorities. You have to clarify your priorities. You've got to clarify the priorities of your life. Now, let me just pause because whenever that word priority is used, everyone talks about finding priorities. But what I want to tell you is that everyone has priorities. They already have them right now. It's not whether you have priorities, it's how you reach those priorities. See, some people have crisis priorities. These are priorities that came as a result of pressure. They felt they were in a crisis and they decided this is what they are. Other people have challenge priorities. These are priorities where you're just living with a challenge and it's by default. Other people have clutter priorities, and it's just so much is going on that it's priorities by chance. So I want you to get it. When you're in crisis, people create priorities, but they do it out of pressure. When you're living with a challenge, people create priorities, but they do it by default. When you have a lot of clutter, a lot of stuff going on, people have priorities, but they do it by chance. But what God ultimately wants is for us to have commitment, priorities by choice, not because of pressure, not because of default, not because of chance, but by choice you choose. See, in life, there are conflicting values that we have to navigate, and there are choices that have to be made. That's what verse 21, 24 was saying that you can't serve two masters. There are competing values out there. You're going to have to navigate them and you are going to have to make choices and you are going to have to choose what you will live for. So the first thing Jesus says about a leader is they've made a choice. They've chosen what they will live for. The second thing, he says, be a person of value. 
be a person of value. He says in verse 25, he says, uh, don't worry about what you will eat, what you will wear, and what you will do. He says, isn't your life more than these things? What he's saying is, you are important. So live like you are important. Be a person of value. You can only create value if you are a person of value. And you have to realize that God made you important. That God placed a value on you. And that no one gets to take that value away or change that value. In your life, you get to be a person of value. So when Jesus was talking about leadership, he says leadership is something that, that leaders have, but it's because they've chosen what they'll live for and they've become a person of value. And when I become a person of value, I can add value to others. See, you're not going to give what you haven't received. And that's what Jesus was referencing. He says, do you understand your life is more than all the aesthetics? It's more than the styles. There's a substance to who you are. And that substance to who you are is that you are important and you are valuable. And because you are a person of value, live with that, those values, be that person who is important and pour value in to others. As I like to tell people, when I walk in a room, I ask this question, who can I help and how can I help? Now, I can't help everyone but there's someone I can help. And I can't help in everything, but there's some way that I can help. What am I saying? I want to add value. I want to make someone else's life better. So what leadership is, it's choosing what you will live, uh, excuse me, it's choosing what you will live for and it's becoming a person of value. The next thing that we reference from the words of Jesus is don't do what everyone else does. Just don't do what everyone else does. We tend to replicate what we've seen. We tend to replicate the models that we've heard. And replication isn't always a good thing. Some of us were raised in environments that we don't want to replicate everything we saw in relationships. Some of us have worked in places where we don't want to replicate everything that we saw done. Don't do what everyone else has done. See, this is what distinguishes you as a leader. See, if you choose what you will live for, and you become a person of value, then you have to decide that you're just not going to do what everyone else does. And what that means is you're going to have to figure out what works. And you're going to have to figure out what works well. So in verses 26 through 29, Jesus says, the birds of the air, they are not all stressed out and all anxious about where they're going to eat, what they're going to eat. The flowers in the field, they're not all worked up, all stressed out. What is he saying? There are systems around us that are easy to replicate, but they're not effective. And in the specific system he's talking about is the system of anxiety and worry and stress. And he's saying, hey, if you're going to lead, you can't do what everyone else does. You can't be the person who's all worked up and is all stressed out. You've got to be a different kind of person. See, leaders challenge ways that don't work. Leaders challenge ways that don't work. They said, hey, you know what? That just doesn't work. That's just not good. That's just not productive. And as a leader, you are going to make that decision. 
Choose what you live for. Become a person of value. Don't do what everyone else does just because it's the only thing that you've seen done. But then Jesus gets down to the real base and he says, if you're really going to be a profound leader, then you've got to be a person of faith. You've got to be a person of faith. And Jesus uses a lot of sayings that relate back to that particular time. And and he talks about what people seek and what people pursue. And then he says, but your heavenly father already knows that you have need of these things. But if you're just occupied with those things, your faith really isn't at a prolific level. And so he says, become a person of faith. Become the person whose faith drives their leadership, whose faith in above drives what they do below, whose faith in the eternal drives what they do today. And it is so important that our faith has to filter down through our life. It has to filter through the everyday function of our life. See, when Jesus talked, In these particular verses, he said, you know what? Everyone does this and everyone's pursuing this, but they're missing it. Your pursuit needs to be above. And if you are pursuing above, you'll do well below. If you make heaven this aim, then what happens is life becomes better. So I want you to get it. Jesus defines leadership, choosing what you will live for, becoming a person of value, not doing what everyone else does, being a person of faith where your faith is filtered through your life. And then he says in verse 33, have clear, definable goals. Have clear, definable goals. See, he said, seek ye first. See, priorities without a goal are just wishes. He says, seek ye first, that's priority, the kingdom of God. That's the goal. And so you have to mesh these two concepts together. You have to have clear goals. Where are you and what do you need to do? See, leaders always aim higher. Right now in the roundtables, I do a whole piece on trying to get people to do this very thing. Because most people are not aiming. They're just shooting. They're not aiming at anything meaningful. They're just shooting. And it's one of the things I tell my team. If you don't have a growth plan, you're not growing. The only thing that grows by accident are weeds. And in your life, God expects you to grow everything he's given you. His relationship with you, his relationship with others, and the relationship that you are to have with the purpose he has given you. So he wants you to grow in him. He wants you to grow in others. And he wants you to grow in your purpose, in your destiny. But if you don't have clear goals in those areas, you're not going anywhere. So. Jesus took all the complexities of leadership and he basically said, I want you to do five things. Choose what you're going to live for. Become a person of value. Don't do what everyone else does. Figure out what works. Become a person of faith and let faith be filtered through your life and have definable, clear goals definable, clear goals. Now, when I go over that list, there's two observations I want you to take. Number one is what I just said is simple. Jesus always took the complex and made it simple. The second observation is anyone can do it. And the reason this lesson is important is because it's the lesson you need to hand off to your people. Because if you will tell them that leadership is choosing what they live for, 
becoming a person of value, not just replicating failed systems, being a person of faith and letting their faith filter in their life and having clear goals. Do you know what they're going to do? They're going to recognize that they can lead also. And that's what I want to say to you. Everyone can lead. I want to remind you, literally tomorrow, March 1st, I'll be in Orlando. March 8th in Albuquerque. March 15th in St. Louis. March 24th in Nashville. Can you just go to my webpage? Can you sign up for that? Those of you that are wanting to raise up leaders, I have a leadership curriculum. It's about 17 lessons. I think it would help you. You can teach it verbatim. The outlines are there. It's easy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for listening to the Gerald Brooks Leadership Podcast. If you'd like more information on Dr. Brooks's books, audio, or speaking engagements, please go to geraldbrooksministries.com.